What's going on guys? In this building right here in Pomona, California is one of the biggest reptile expos in the country. This is the Reptile Super Show. And every time I'm here and do these videos, I always show you guys the coolest reptiles that can be found at this reptile expo. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go around this expo and I'm not only gonna show you the coolest reptiles that are at this expo, I'm gonna pick out the funkiest, weirdest, most amazing reptiles you guys have ever seen. So let's get in there and tour the Reptile Super Show here in Pomona, California. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Are you excited about the Reptile Super Show? Dude, I'm always excited about the Reptile Super Show. Are you kidding? What are you not excited about? What am I not excited about? Your channel? So there are a lot of really amazing, cool, funky reptiles at this expo, but right here at Marky Reptiles, he's got something that is gonna blow your mind. So this is Marky Reptiles. I'm here with Josh Marky. You have something here that I just literally walked by and saw these and my eyes popped out of my head. What have we got here? These are lavender albino Saharan Euromastix. Simple, these... simple recessive animals. I proved genetic a couple of years ago and these are the first ones in the world. That's a boy and that's a girl. Wow, all right, so history. Where did these guys come from? Uh, the, the original one came out of the wild as a hatchling. I bought it, raised it to adulthood, bred it. All the offspring were normal appearing. I raised those up, bred them, and it proved to be simple. So we are looking at the world's first these albino are, Euromastics. These are the world's first. The nice thing is they're T positive, so they have pigment in the eyes. They're not blind. They've been perfectly happy and healthy, just like a normal one. Look at those guys. They also come in a red and orange color phase too, naturally, and I have red and orange albinos at home. You can kind of see this female's almost got kind of a pink peach to her. And yeah. Yeah, they're really very, very pretty. Just beautiful. Oh my God. All right, so how long have you been working on this project? Just under six years. Just under six years. So you were in this for the long haul. I am indeed, sir. I certainly am. Wow. They're really and neat. so what were you working with before these? Ball pythons, and Ball I still pythons, do, and I enjoy and them. you still do. I do, I enjoy them. But I just like to diversify into other fun projects, and this was so beautiful. And what a project. Right? Whoa. That is absolutely insane. I'm glad you enjoy them. I love them, too. They're really neat. All right, so we got babies over there we've yes, got sir. albino babies we've got het babies yep what are we looking at for prices on those uh, an albino male is twenty thousand twenty thousand an albino pair is thirty six thousand and that's u.s dollars yes sir yeah yeah, yeah. And, a, and a pair and, <laughs> and a pair of heads are ten thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars are you selling tons indeed i've had a very good year so far you bet fantastic yeah, certainly so it's can i very can good. i get a ride in your lamborghini ah not this season <laughs> maybe next year <laughs> those are just absolutely jaw-dropping well yeah, i appreciate it i really do I love them. All right, so those were the adults. Let's check out one of the babies. Look at this. So there's a little hatchling next to a normal appearing Saharan side by side. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that wild how different they are even right out of the egg? Okay, those are absolutely amazing. Yeah, they really are beautiful. And they vary a bunch. Some have more lavender, some have more yellow, some have more orange. Just depends on the individual. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, I... I very rarely do I ever see a reptile that I'm actually speechless about. Thanks, man. And I, I've got no word. I mean, other than just absolutely amazing. I appreciate it so much. I've been, I've been living in a building with these all by myself for the last five two years, and I'm so glad that people get to see them and enjoy them. Oh my God! Absolutely They're, amazing. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you much, man. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy, you know what's wrong with my finger? I do not. Too many people have pulled it. Oh. 
That's upsetting. I'm gonna go stand over here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bob Bledsoe from Green Room Pythons, what funkiness have you got there? Dave, I have a leaf tail gecko here. This is a new species though that was just described this year. It's a Europlatus garamasso. Europlatus garamasso. I said it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't correct me, I said it right. I didn't correct you. And here's the thing. Alex, On this one anyway. Alex here <laughs> at Stardust Scales had some of these and they were, she thought, I mean, she didn't think, they were just called at the time Europlatus hinkley. And, but she noticed that they were a little bit different and she bred them. And this year, did you even know that they were going to be described? I Alex? didn't know when it was gonna happen. Yeah. You I just been, saw an article. Yeah, I just saw an article pop up and was like, oh wow, that's that's a gecko. That's what with. I got. Look at his beard. Oh, oh boy. Look at his beard. Oh yeah. He's got such a cool beard. Yeah, and you know something about cool I, beards. I know something about cool beards. I also know something about the fact that it's so cool when a new species is described. That is true. He's gonna boing. He's gonna boing. Wait He's gonna boing. It, He's gonna boing. <laughs> oh, failure. That is a that is a funky Europlatus. It sure is. Yeah. yeah. That is what they look like fired up. Wow. These are just gorgeous. Oh, we're putting him away? All right, fine. Well, see you, buddy. He's causing all kinds of problems. Yeah. All kinds of mayhem. When you look as good as this one, you can come back into the video. <laughs> That is gorgeous, holy buckets. So guys, in about, uh, what is it, January now? So in two, two months, months, we are going down to Suriname, which is in South America. We are going on an Amazon expedition to find so many cool things. So many things. We're, I, I have to get my visa. We already got our flights. So those videos are coming up on both of our channels. Green yeah. Room Python's channel is in the description below. If you're not watching Bob, you got it. His channel is pretty awesome. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, not as awesome as mine, but- I love how you stumbled you know, on that. I, I Perfect thing to stumble on. I didn't, nobody heard me stumble because I edited it. <laughs>
and you don't really see a lot of really deep, dark, black leopard geckos here. What are the genetics on him? So he's line bred. He's line bred, so he is black knight only. There are no heterozygous traits on him, so anything that you could breed him, well, you could breed him with another black knight and you would get super deep, dark babies like this. So this is one of our big breeder females. She is the mama of most of our, well, of a good portion of our black knights from this past season. Um, we do have a lot of pictures. Uh, they all of her babies have been really dark like this the male that we pair him with um, he is about this color as well he has just a little bit of the patterning on his head but that's it if we were to take this guy and breed him to a normal what would we get you would get a slightly darker normal okay yes that doesn't sound very exciting it doesn't sound very exciting not at all no great looking leopard gecko that is awesome thank you so much all right so over here at morph menagerie we've got a crested gecko that is Kind of weird. Uh, it's a sniffin. <laughs> and is that because he has a cold, or what's what's going on with that name? Always. But yeah. uh, we um, we went derived it just from the parents' names. Perfect combination of uh, what the two brought to the table. So a niffin and a siren. That's it. Makes a sniffin. <laughs> All right. Let's check this sniffin out. All right. Now that is a really amazing looking crested gecko. So under this lighting. Yeah, maybe it doesn't translate for that well onto camera, but that is almost bleach white. Nice cream colors. Look at those side patterns. And how old is this gecko? This gecko's about three and a half to four years old. She makes beautiful babies. Last year was her first year of breeding. She makes carbon copies of herself, but she's super friendly, super active. Yeah, she is. We absolutely love her. Wow. That is a very funky crusted gecko. Garrett Hartle. Dave Kaufman. What did you see at this expo that you would think is the funkiest reptile here? It's going to be the same answer that everybody's going to give you. It's the two-headed California king snake from TSK. And we saw it. And it was awesome. That was it. Have you ever seen a two-headed retic? Yes. Where? Prehistoric pets. They hatched a motley, but it didn't survive. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. So if not the two-headed cow king, then all the way down in the back, in like in the center aisle on the right, there is a gigantic Mexican beaded lizard that's like solid black with a couple little yellow spots. It almost looks like a croc monitor in size and color. Really? Incredible. Okay, we got to go check that it's out. It's the second coolest Mexican beaded lizard I've ever seen, and I've seen Fernando, Bob Applegate's old one. Where is it? You want to go see it? Yeah, let's, let's go it. check it out. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have arrived. We got Mexican beadeds here. Look at the size of these guys. But right next door is the big black. Oh, um, that is an open cage at a reptile expo, and the big dude is gone. So these guys are pretty cool, and they were for sale. These are the the bright yellow jasper hooks right down in the end. Oh, it's out! Oh, it's out! Holy buckets! That is one hell of a derma. See what I did there? Hello, derma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy gets it over there. <laughs> this is the owner. That is a beautiful animal. Don't tell, them, don't tell them to me. Yeah. Don't, tell them, don't tell them you're buying it. No, no. That's, no, that's a, a beast. <laughs> Look at the jowls. How old is he? 11. 11? Yeah. Tell me that's Ooh. not one of the coolest, if not the coolest, Mexican beaded you've ever seen. Absolutely it is. Look at this. I just love the way these guys feel. Right. They this just feel so, impressive. what's the word? Bumpy. Uh, I'll say, um, bedazzled. Be bedazzled, <laughs> yes. Yes. Bedazzled. He, he, he does have the bling. Wow, what a gentle animal. That is amazing. Good Perfect. pick. Uh, over six feet. So, two-headed yeah. snake, I mean, that almost always wins, but, like, as far as, like, primo version of what it is, am I this right? This is a primo version. who is one of the top breeders of leopard geckos in the world. Well, 
if you breed that many leopard geckos, you're sure to get something funky. And so I'm heading over to Steve's booth right now, and he has told me that he has something that I absolutely need to show you guys. All right, Steve Sykes, always good to see you. Good to see you too. You are, for those who don't know, the leopard gecko king. Thank you. Yeah, I, your majesty. But you have one of the weirdest geckos at this expo. I haven't seen this yet. Show us what you got. Sure, all right. So in 2022, we hatched a uh, super snow, which is nothing too uh, abnormal, but uh, this gecko certainly has something very special and unique about it. I've never seen any other gecko like this. <laughs> so as you look at it, it looks like a normal super snow leopard gecko. Super snow, yep. But this guy has something a little different. He sure does. Oh my God. <laughs> that is crazy. There's two little legs. Yep. This is a six-legged leopard gecko. Yep, he can wiggle his toes. He's about a year and a half old. He's done really well. Uh, apparently. Yeah. So now, does that make him any faster? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we haven't tried racing him, but yeah. That is insane. Look at that. So what this is, is that's called like a parasitic twin. I believe so, So yeah. it was going to be twins, and that's all that's left of his little twin. <laughs> Look at that. That is crazy. So there's two little legs coming out of one little spot in his belly there. So when you hatched this guy out and you saw that, what did you think? I mean, I, I've never seen anything like this in all my many years of breeding leopard geckos. Wow. Um, so, and you know, you've been breeding leopard geckos for what, like 250 years, <laughs> right? <laughs> We've been breeding leopard geckos since 1997. 1997. So, yeah. So that was only 200 years ago. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. But look at, I mean, he's big, he's yeah. chunky. Happy, he's, he's healthy, he does fine. So. He just happens to be a six-legged leopard gecko. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. We gotta look at that just one more time. Sure thing. Boink, two other legs. <laughs> I've never even heard of anything like this. Yeah. I mean, that is just bizarre world. Yeah, we haven't treated it any differently. He eats well, he sheds, you know, fine. Sometimes he needs a little bit of help to uh, get the shed off the toe tips there on right? the extra legs, but he's been doing okay. But now, do they move independently? I mean, he can, he, he has some motion there, or they do wiggle a little bit, but. I mean, certainly they're not, he's not using them for locomotion. Yeah. They're just some extra legs that uh, come along for the ride, so. Are you going to hang on to him or are you going to sell him? Well, we've had him for a year and a half. We've been, certainly enjoyed keeping this uh, little guy, um, but he's for sale if anyone's interested, yeah. And if you're interested, he is only 2,000 American dollars. 2,000 American dollars and you will have the fastest leopard gecko on earth. <laughs> Indeed. Wow. I mean, that is just absolutely epic. Thanks, Steve. Nice. Always good to see you. <laughs> hey, look. I knew it was going to lay eggs. <laughs> this one pooped. It pooped white poop. Hey, get out of there. I'm trying to show your poop. Can you? No. There you go. Poop. <laughs> yeah, you have a 100% hatching rate on your Near. lizard poop? Yeah, there. You do. Wow. That's you impressive. are one talented yeah. dude. Thank you. Yeah. I wish I could get uh, my lizard poop to hatch. <laughs> So, you know, when I go to these expos, I walk around and I see the thousands of amazing snakes and other reptiles that are here. And very rarely do I ever get something because I like making my own heads. I like breeding my own babies that I hold back. But I saw something here that I absolutely had to get. And here she is. Look at this big girl. This is a pastel desert ghost female, a ball python. So Desert Ghost is a recessive gene. Pastel is a dominant gene that has a super form. But now the question is, what am I gonna breed this girl to? And what I'm thinking of doing is putting my male clown pied to her this year. But I don't know, if you guys have any ideas as to what I should put with this beautiful pastel Desert Ghost, comment below, let me know pretty sure it's going to be that pied clown, but I don't know. This is really awesome. The other thing is, is that when you're at an expo like this and you fly in, how are you going to get this snake home? Well, it just so happens that I am sitting at Ship Your Reptiles. So when you come to an expo like this and you buy a snake, you can go to Ship Your Reptiles booth 
and they will ship your snake home for you. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do right here. Susie, ship yes. this please. You got it. Thank you. We've got the supplies, we've got the insulated boxes, we've got the bags, we've got delis, not that we're gonna use a deli for this baby. Um, we've got 40 hour and 72 hour heat packs. And then we've got these phase change packs, which are amazing. They're going to take the high speak, the high peaks out of the heat pack and regulate really well. Ooh. So it can go from here where it's warmer, in theory, um, to where you are and it will help regulate. It'll keep it cooler while it's here and warmer while it's there. Fantastic. And they're reusable which is super awesome. Okay, please put one of those in my box with my girl. You got it. And again, ship your reptiles, will ship your snakes at any expo that they are at, right here at their table. Awesome. So guys, all the vendors are packing up. That's the end of another amazing reptile super show here in Pomona, California. One of the things that I love about these expos is that there are so many vendors and so many snakes and so much awesome reptile goodness to see. And I will definitely be back here for the next reptile super show here in Pomona, California. So guys, I just want to give a real quick shout out and a thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, Feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.